probability theta it's 1 with probability 1 minus theta it's a 0 okay so pr with probability theta x equal 1 with probability 1 minus theta x equals 0 so the expectation is the mean of the distribution and we show that it's equal to theta so the expectation is the probability of x being equal to 1 if the variable x is rain the expectation of rain is the same as the probability of rain okay we also um, use the same um, um, uh, sort of workings with expectations and we computed the um, expectation of the squared uh, of the variable minus the mean which we define as the variance and um, and then we even plotted a variance so the variance is theta times 1 minus theta and if you plot it you essentially see that you have this parabola um, that appears there in red and that the maximum happens at the half so when theta is a half your variance is largest so think of variance as a measure of uncertainty okay. if you have a coin whose probability of heads is a half then you're very uncertain if I ask you what's it going to be next 0 or 1 um, you're very uncertain but if I have a coin that you know that the probability of 1 is 0 0.99 and I ask you what's it going to be next you quite likely will say it's a 1 because you're very certain so in this case um, so the closer theta is to 1 or to 0 the least the uncertainty and that's essentially what that red curve tells us we'll see that variance is not the only way to describe uncertainty um, but there's going to be something else called entropy now learning is about minimizing uncertainty you enter this world and there's a lot of stuff you don't know and then what you try to do is always minimize the things that you don't know minimizing uncertainty or very equivalently maximizing information that's what learning is about right now you are doing that you're trying to minimize your uncertainty in this field or as to what you think are cool areas of computer science etc um, gaining information means minimizing uncertainty we will use that as the principle for learning today one last technicality we also learned that if we have if the coins if I toss a coin and then say he tosses a coin we can pretty much assume that the two coin tosses are independent of each other um, um, you know it, it's very unlikely that there's some physical mechanism that would connect the two coins and so if the two events are independent um, the product of A and B uh, uh, the probability of A and B is just the product of the probability of A times the probability of B and so if the two coin flips are independent coin flip 1 and coin flip 2 we can write the joint distribution which is this 2 by 2 table as just the product of the individual tables the nice thing is that uh, when you have n variables you would have a 2 to the n table here and here you have n times 2 ta uh, n tables of size 2 okay. okay so independence just like conditional independence is like an extreme form of <laughs> the conditional independence so in fact what we're saying is that our graphical model is of this form x1, x2 all the way up to xn so we have n variables and there's no connections, there's no edges they're completely independent so the graph factorizes the probability of the variable given its parent since variables have no parents it's just the probability of the variables and the random variables here again is the x's not the thetas that's very important okay so the theta is sort of a parameter okay um, with that let's get started with something that starts this is our first slide on learning uh, we're finally starting the topic of learning after doing some revision 
Um, so today I'm going to introduce the first type of uh, principle for doing learning, and that's the principle of maximum likelihood. Um, we will see how we can apply maximum likelihood to learning um, a coin. In other words, you see a bunch of tosses, and then you try to estimate the probability of heads of the coin. You try to estimate the bias of the coin. Um, we then will connect uh, this with um, something called entropy. Um, how many of you have heard the concept of entropy, about the concept of entropy before? So about half of the class. Um, and the formal definition of information? About three, four. Okay. We're going to cover those and we're going to relate that to learning. And in, in particular to contrasting. This idea that we learn when the world is not what we imagine. Okay, because if the world is like what we imagine, there's no reason to change our brains. We got it. But if the world is different than what we imagine in our heads, we need to update our knowledge. And as we saw with the computer vision examples at the beginning of the course, where you, you thought you were seeing the whole scene, but you really, you really weren't. You were just filling it in. Um, that kind of emphasizes that most of the things that we think we see are actually being invented by your brain. So being able to uh, generate, we do it subconsciously, being able to generate data is a very important part of uh, cognition. Okay, so this principle of maximum likelihood is based on um, frequencies of events. Okay, so we go back to this view of probability based on frequencies. And this form of learning assumes that there is a truth. There is one Codley or whatever truth uh, from which the data has been generated. Okay, we call that truth, uh, we refer to that um, truth with this parameter theta naught. Okay. We then try to approximate the truth, given some observations, with an estimate, theta hat. Okay? We, we don't know what the truth is. So there is a true, by, you know, you basically observe me flipping a coin, and you don't know what the true um, bias, how much lead I put on one side of the, of the coin. Um, so you instead you guess it. And when you guess it, the guess will be, with a hat. Okay. This is what maximum likelihood does. Maximum likelihood, given a data set, and we're going to assume that we have, say, n coin tosses, x1 to xn, it tries to find the theta that makes those x1 to n most probable. Okay. There's a lot padded in this expression. And typically in a machine learning paper, this is one of the first equations in the front page. It's a very common equation. Let's parse it. Um, first, if we have it as first, let's say that we have some function that looks like this, theta. And this is, I'm going to now interpret the distribution as a function of theta. Let's for now assume that we can think of this as an object that depends on theta. So a computer program that has x1 to n already inside, you pass it a value of theta and it returns p of x1 to n given theta. Okay. The point of the max, this is the max. The location of the max is what we call the arg max, which is in this case it's equal to theta hat. So arg max means the argument that maximizes.
And as the picture shows, theta hat is just that theta for which the curve p of x given theta um, is at its maximum. Okay? So it's the location of the maximum. Okay, so let's look at it with an example. Suppose you have observed a coin <coughs> and that coin was 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This coin could be 0, 1, but you only observe the sequence of 6 ones. Now, if I ask you, um, and let's say that the distribution of that coin is p of x i given theta equal to theta to the x i times 1 minus theta to the 1 minus x i. So a Bernoulli distribution where x i is either 0 or 1. Or in other words, just to re remind you, this would be theta when x i is equal to 1 and 1 minus theta when x i equal to 0. Now if we have a, a distribution that models the probability of heads and the probability of tails, um, and let's come up with two guesses. So I'm going to use theta 1 is going to be 0 0.99. Theta 2 is going to be equal to 0 0.5. So let's put this to a vote. How many people would go with theta 1? Can I count? Quite a few. Hard to go. Theta 2. You know, hard to believe. <laughs> I'm going to offline find out why you would like theta 2. Um, so most people prefer theta 1. And that's because if you have a coin with probability 0.99 of it being a 1, in other words, p of x equal 1 given theta 1, it should be about, well, it's, it's precisely 0 0.99, whereas p of x equal 1 given theta 2, is equal to 0 0.5. So 0 0.99 is much closer to 1. So if you've seen five ones, you probably think that it should be 0 0.99. That makes more sense. Now, how many of you have heard of black swans and the famous black swan paradox? Okay. So folks believe that there was black swans didn't exist. Okay, they, I, I don't recall how the story goes, but I'm, let me just tell the tale this way. Um, they were in England, I think, where there were only white swans, correct me if I'm wrong. And of course, the Europeans lived in Europe for many years. They fought their wars, etc., etc. Um, they grew and they loved their swans and eventually they learned to sail and they went to Australia with a bunch of prisoners. and. After seeing millions of white swans, in other words, they saw one, 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 their theta by this time is 0 0.99999. So it's like there's no way there could be black swans. But they get to Australia and voila, there's a black swan. So the statistical model fails. We'll see how to deal with that one later. But this is essentially saying it. If you've just seen one thing, the black swan, the one, sorry, the white swan, the one, then it's much more likely than one model describes it. Now, so now we sort of have, m most of you with, except for one exception, which we'll find out soon, uh, what the uh, problem is. I I'm sure you have a good reason. He studies philosophy, so he's. <laughs> um, um, you know, sort of basic intuition tells us that the 0.99 is better. Let's come up now with a, a procedure that will allow us to verify that. And that procedure is maximum likelihood. Now, I'm going to apply this procedure to a coin, but this procedure actually applies to every model out there. 
So we can get a very complex model to describe, I don't know, all the interactions between customers and advertisers in Yahoo or to advertise exactly how your medical records um, are used to be able to diagnose someone in a different province um, and so on. So you can get very sophisticated models, but at the end of the day, the machinery that we use, the procedure, is the same. It's the same steps. So if you learn to do these steps for one model, it's just like minor adjustment to do it for another model. Okay, this step one of maximum likelihood. You're given the data, so you've observed the sequence of events, x1 to xn, n events. Um, the first thing is you make some assumptions uh, over uh, about the data, and for example, in this case, we could assume that the data is independent. Okay, so um, if we assume that the data is independent, we can write this as the product from 1 to n of p of xi given theta, as we saw at the beginning of the class. Um, the, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to define um, this thing called the log likelihood, L of theta, and that's going to be the log of P of x1, 2, and given theta, and so that's, that's going to just be the sum of our i equal 1 to n of the log of p of xi given theta. Here I have used uh, the standard log formula and the log of a times b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b. Okay. The reason why we transform to logs is because the next step, which is differentiate and equate to zero, um, L of theta, is much easier to do in log space than in the original space. So the log space is just a trick to make the next part, next step easier. So we start with the likelihood for all the data, the joint. We factorize it. If we didn't assume it was independent, then it would factorize as a graphical model. That's the case. We will study that next week. But if the data is independent, it just factorizes all as independent. You take the log, you differentiate, and you equate to zero. Most of the things we do in machine learning follow this formula, except for Bayesian learning, which will be very different. But we always follow this formula. We always follow this recipe. This is by far one of the most popular recipes out there. There's other recipes, but this one, I would say about 70 percent of all papers out there use this formula, use this procedure. Okay. Let's see an example of this in practice. Okay. Let's look at our Bernoulli distribution. First of all, we know that for this, in this case, p of xi given theta would be theta to the xi times 1 minus theta to the xi. So if, if we have a product, if we have many coin tosses, n coin tosses, we would write this as p of x i given theta, which would just be equal to the product from i equal 1 to n of theta x i times 1 minus theta, whoops, that should be 1 minus, 1 minus x i, okay? And now we can actually simplify this a little bit because <coughs> let me introduce some notation first. The notation that I will introduce, let m be equal to the number of ones and let n be equal to the number of coin flips. Okay. Now if I multiply, let's look at this guy. 
that's theta to a variable xi and that variable xi is either 0 or 1. So if I had two coin tosses, if I had x1 to 2 being equal to say 1 and then 0, um, for this term only I would have had theta to the 1 and then, I, and then at time step 2 I would have had theta to the 0. So basically I end up with theta to the 1 which is theta to the number of ones in the sequence. So using the same argument, I will say that this simplifies to theta to the m. Thank you. Should it be 1 minus theta also? He's just talking about the first. Now I'm talking only about this term. So I'm, I'm only simply trying to, let me, Sorry to confuse you. Let me uh, take it back. Let me use a different symbol. Suppose I have a sequence x which is equal to 1, 1, and then 0. Okay, so x1 is 1, x2 is 1, and x3 is 1. And let's assume that I have something that is of the form a to the xi product over i. Okay, so then that will be equal to a to the 1 times a to the 1 times a to the 0 and that's just equal to a to the 2. Okay, so I'm just saying that if you multiply a symbol to a power that's either 0 and 1, you just get that symbol to the number of 1's. Okay. Likewise, if I have a product over i of b to 1 minus xi, I would have had b to the 0 times b to the 0 times b to the 1. Okay, because when xi is 1, 1 minus xi is 0. And so this would be equal to b to 3 minus 2. So n in this case is 3 and then 3 minus the number of 1's so n is equal to 3, m is equal to 2 okay. and so that's what I've used to get the red line so theta to the number of 1's and then n minus m is equal to the number of zeros. And so this just allows us to write this in a much shorter notation. The next step is to do the log likelihood. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Yeah. The next step is to do the log likelihood. So the log likelihood is a function of theta is the log of p of x1 to n given theta and that's just going to be m log theta plus n minus m log 1 minus theta. Okay. And then the next step will be differentiate with respect to theta and solve for theta. Before we do that, if you toss a coin n times and you observe m ones, what do you think is the probability of it being 1? If m times it's 1 out of n times, what's the probability of a 1? n over n. m over n. Okay, so that's the basic intuition. The probability of 1 is the number of times you observe a 1 divided by the number of coin tosses. Hopefully, when we do all this math, we'll get that answer. Okay, so the derivative of the log of theta is equal to the derivative with respect to theta of I need to look up quickly m log theta plus n minus m log 1 minus theta okay, and the rest is just calculus so you just get m over theta and then you get plus n minus m 
the derivative of this, which is minus 1 times 1 over 1 minus theta. is equal to 1 minus theta times m uh, plus m minus n times theta and we're going to divide it by theta times 1 minus theta. Okay, so I've just regrouped the terms and then finally we equate to zero to solve for theta okay. and if we do that we have that one we have that m minus theta m plus theta m minus theta n is equal to zero from where we can conclude since this cancels with this that theta is equal to m over n. Yeah, wow. <laughs> no surprises here. The maximum likelihood gives you the right thing. And as we move on and we do many different kind of models, you'll see that maximum likelihood gives you the, the, the sort of thing you would, your intuition would tell you is what you should do. Okay. So one way to remember likelihood is to remember this procedure. You write down the distribution, you take the log, differentiate, equate to zero, you get this. So if you have a complex graphical model, as we'll see later, we'll do the same thing. We'll write the distribution of that graphical model, and now we know how to write it down, probability of the nodes given its parent. Now assume that the tables are unknown. All those, all those values that I've been assuming knowing, assume we have no expert to tell us that. But all we have is data. And so we need to learn where, from the data straight what those numbers are. Uh, we're just going to follow the same tedious procedure. I mean, this procedure is, you have to do it because you have to learn it. But this is the sort of thing a machine does. There's nothing here that is, requires thinking. You just follow the recipe. You write down what the model is. That's the part that is inventive. It's coming up with the model. That, that's not easy. Coming up with good models, designing good models, is the hard bit. And that's why I encourage you to go to the Jeb applets and start toying with your own models. Um, once you have a model, um, the procedure is very mechanical. You write down the probability, you differentiate it, you equate to zero, and voila, that's your answer. The last step is we are differentiating with, with respect to theta and equating to zero because we are assuming that the graph is, the distribution is something like this. Yeah, we're assuming that, the, exactly. And if for distribution is something else, this yes. would fail, right? This distribution as a function of theta has a single maximum okay. with a derivative of zero. Later, we will learn other distributions that look like this. Right. So this will be tricky. We're not there yet. Kind of theta, uh, they, all of them are ones, right? So theta would come out to be one, but exactly. But that is one. not correct. Right? We should not learn. In the next one. class, we address that question. Okay. Let me finish with this one, and then we're going to deal with that in the next class. That's going to be the topic of Bayesian learning. Okay. So now. In order to understand why maximal likelihood, guys, we can take this in the next class. I will definitely show to you how to do this the right way. Um, now, it's important to know why maximal likelihood works and how maximal likelihood relates. Because up to now, it just looks mechanical. It's you write a probability, you take a log, you maximize it. It's, it's just like math. It's like, what does that mean? Um, and so to understand it, it's a good idea to um, first introduce a concept, entropy. Now entropy, very dryly, is, the, is defined as p log p, the sum of a p log p over the values of x. And it actually is a measure of also uncertainty, just like variance. 
To see that, let's do an example. Let's assume that we have the variable x, then the entropy that happens to be Bernoulli, so we have coin, coin flips again. Um, so the entropy is going to be equal to the sum over x minus, and now we replace p of x by the distribution, which is theta to the x times 1 minus theta to the 1 minus x times the log of theta to the x times 1 minus theta to the 1 minus x and that turns out to be so x goes from 0 to 1 so it takes two values so we get theta log theta minus 1 minus theta log of 1 minus theta. Okay. Now I could do the same thing that I did with um, the variance which is differentiate equate to 0 to show you that there is a unique maximum and so on um, but I'm going to instead just use um, a plot that I took from Wikipedia which shows you the curve of h of x as a function of p of x equal 1 which is what we are defining as theta. So as a function of theta again entropy for a coin is maximum when there is maximum uncertainty when the coin has equal probability of being 1 or 0 at 0 0.5 and then as it becomes informative the entropy goes down. So entropy is a measure of uncertainty. It's, exact, it's a negative of information. Information, in information theory, or basically the, the concept that underpins how these guys came to be, thanks to Shannon, is actually defined in terms of this quantity h of x. It's the opposite of h of x, so the negative. So by increasing uncertainty, you decrease information. When you increase information, you just decrease the uncertainty. So, so you know, they're just a reciprocal one over the other. And that's how Shannon actually, was it 60 years ago, roughly, um, started information theory, which is <coughs> where the, uh, the word bit was introduced. Bit is the unit that is used to describe H. Okay, the next, I'm going to leave you for you two guys to go and do at your home, at home, and then come and talk to me during office hours. Um, very quick.